church right now. So we're asking you to church us right now. Take out our hearts and our minds. If you find anything that it should be, right now, Jesus, we ask you to take it away and straighten us. Put us on the right road, Jesus. Oh, God, have your way with us. We know you have all power, Jesus. And you can do anything except fail. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Oh, we thank you for the house this morning. Oh, we thank you for everyone in this house. Oh, Heavenly Father, we go. We know you are in you. And we give giving you thanks. Oh, God, thank you. Have your way, Jesus. In this time like this, Jesus. You say that we need you, oh, Heavenly Father, we call on you. Right now, oh, Heavenly Father, we all need you. And some different reasons. Some need you for one thing. My God, oh God, you made us and you know all about us. You know exactly what we need right now. So we have to follow ground out of please. Oh God, we thank you. We love calling on you, Jesus. Because there's something about the name of Jesus. When we call on you, Jesus, everything we did all right. So we thank you right now that we are able to call on you. Oh, we trust in the believing in you right now. Oh, God, we long over that here. We won't be able to be between these four walls. We ask you, oh, help the Father, we give up our hope. Somewhere. Well, nobody can put us out. There'll be no more sadness. No more sickness. We don't know when and we don't know when. We might be here at the church. Might be riding up and down the house. But whenever Jesus, whenever it comes, Father, I know my house is in I just pray that everybody around. How could we have lost? Not getting ready. We have to follow and have the house and all. When you call us. God, we want to be ready. Oh, God, and have your will. God, these things and all that we ask in Jesus' name. That all hearts, amen. 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 amen.
for this I say thank you.
They talk about everything they want in that thing, and they don't know. But uh, when you're out there in the football field or the basketball, they screaming and hopping. They doing, they cheering. But when you know how good God's been to you, don't nobody have to tell you, open up your mouth, lift your hand. So when I want you to open up your mouth and give me praise, and God's been a down in your life, and God's telling things around in your life,
when the believer got to get to a place where I praise, nothing should stress our praise. Hey, and I need somebody in this seat to know what up your mouth. Look at how it look. I should have to hear. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this word because nothing should stress our praise. And you go through what a kind of thing. He said it all things give him thanks. I think worship team the leaders don't leave me in a place where you only say when it's good. Leave me when it's tell me how to say in a strange place. So can I get somebody to open up your mouth and bless God where you are?
Son, if you just do this for me, let the devil know what you're going to do in the midst of it. I dare you, I dare you to just send up your own worship, send up your own praise. Begin to clap your hands and bless God who you are.
But at this time, we get ready to show an our giving. And that's releasing our giving. Because giving is part of worship. You can give without worship, but you can't worship without giving. So I believe when we worship, never take me somewhere. Try to take me somewhere that you have not been. I want you to teach our worship to everybody. you got to learn how to become givers first. Seek you first the kingdom of God and rights and all these things will be added. As we are preparing to give, we get ready to show and give to the Lord. Everything he blessed us with, we're saying to God, if it had not been for you, yes. if it had not been for you, yes. I would not have made it. So I need you to get ready to give to the Lord. You didn't want to give. You want to give by credit card, you can. Um, you want to give by cash out, dollar sign, leak nation, you can. You want to give by PayPal. You want to give by Give Five. You can take your seats and let know. If you want to give, you can give. And you, you want to lighten the load. If you hear me with money, lighten the load and come on, give somebody. Amen. 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 Yeah, but like, I sit in our church all the time. I'm learning this. I love gators. I love customs. So I love all of that. But I should put more on my body than I give to God. I wish I had one witness in that. Hairdos. Hair dudes are not cheap. Wigs are not cheap. Come on, somebody. Eyelashes are not cheap. Nails ain't cheap. Manicure, manicure, pedicure, it ain't cheap. Unless you not do your own, you know, I'm just saying. Listen, listen, you blessed, man. Lord, have mercy. You blessed. You blessed. That's a blessing. However, whatever it takes to look good, Listen, I believe that we should honor God Amen. and what we have. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm learning Amazon is one of the fastest growing business in the world. Yes, God. In the yes, world. God. Why don't the church be one of the fastest ones in the world? Right. Come on. Amen. Amen. So we want to move in and be a part of that. We're grateful. We're grateful for everything as we began to show. Listen, if you want to give, you can give. Yeah. Sisters, and uh, we have our people, they know how to do two and one. We got our deacons, we got no ministers, we know how to do it all. We're just servants. That's right. It's not in my title, it's about servants. So, and we learn how to serve. Amen. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, all right. All right. And so we learn how to serve. Amen. Let's give to the Lord. We got someone giving, all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, good to see you. Good to see you. I'm going to make y'all mad. Good to see you, Jerry. Good to see you, Jerry. Yeah. I'm 
trails over there. I'm in the kingdom of God. I ain't leaving the church. 
Cause he said upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Yes, I'd rather be in the church and him be good with some hell and no God than to be out of the church and him be good in hell and don't even know God. Y'all can say whatever you want to say about the church. I'm glad I'm in the church. I hear somebody. I need somebody to understand. So you're grateful. Listen, as we got ready, it brings us great honor. I, I, I'm thankful, grateful, um, thankful. Thank you, worship team. Thankful and grateful. Yeah. Let's say amen. Amen. I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for um, the maturity and uh, the level and as we grow in God because there are not many preachers coming up. And I want y'all to hear this. I've been preaching for 33 years. There's not many preachers coming up that are very humble and mature. So when I talk to this young man who's going to bless us today, who is a proud member and who are raised in this church. Yes. Yes. At the Providence Mission Baptist yes. Church. Yes. Under the leading church. Thank you. And when Pastor Emeritus came to me, he said, no, you pastor, I want to do this. I said, listen, when I see a young man, I began to talk to him, and he's so mature. Yes, he is. Oh. I thought I was talking to our new president. Amen. Go ahead, y'all. Be the president. Y'all know y'all need a new president. Y'all know y'all need one. Y'all know y'all need one. Bad. But, uh, but be sure. But I, 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 I say this as we got right into hearing his. I want to call and I want y'all to understand being as bishop as possible, not just trial sermon. We, are, we say trial sermon, but really when you understand scripture, this is his first sermon, but he's really been born to preach. The Bible says before his mother met his daddy, he said, I formed you in the womb. I had it already, so when mom and dad came together, I formed you in mama's womb. I knew you and I sanctified you. So the process of that, so him preaching his first sermon, and so I wanted to give an honor. I know many people do it on Sunday evening, but I thought, Listen, let's just do it on Sunday morning. Um, listen, if y'all did what I did when I came up, my first time preaching, he be good. Yeah, now, it's like this. When my son, I'm setting up when my son played football, little Christian, he could be running in the wrong direction. He be good. I'm still going to yell. I'm going to be on the sideline. Boy, go, boy, go. Nobody's going to beat me. He be good. Support my child. I wish I had somebody. But when I saw him breaking out, he was running and running back, and he was running in the right direction, shaking him and juking him and all that. Listen, I, I, you know, I started to run on the field too, you know. But I got happy. What I'm saying to us, when we learn how to support our own, the world should support our own better than the church. So we're going to give honor. So we're going to do this and. His family's come, his mother's come, and uh, people are here, and uh, we're going to help him preach, and we're going to say amen to the preach gospel. Amen, amen somebody. Amen. We're going to do this together, and he's going to, um, so what I'm going to allow Pastor Emeritus to present him, amen. and then we're going to know, because we don't, um, we don't hold you long, praise the Lord. We allow the Spirit of God to move, amen. and so I can get to the football game. Amen. <laughs> come on, somebody. Lakers won last night. Lakers won. Did the Lakers win? Yes, Lord. Amen. You do know we can have church if you have fun. Amen. I don't want to be nowhere dead. I want some life. So listen, let's thank God. Would you give honor and respect? And about you consider your seat if you so desire. So men of your age, he don't have to be on desire. So I still it. And we praying for him. Amen. 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 Everything, all right. Uh, let's thank God for Pastor Emeritus. He's going to present an uh, outspeaker, young man, and preaching him the gospel. Amen. Amen. Let's thank God for Pastor Emeritus. Amen. 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 What a privilege. What a privilege. Amen. I'm going to come with a great privilege. Amen. Amen. I've been doing it to come in. Everything is down here. Yep. He was born in the church, so he was born in this ministry. Yeah. But I just, I just want to let y'all know this is a great man. He's a 
very humble, you better than sin. You love the Lord. Him yes, through that from over the hill. The more our young people they they they, they, they go get get a get a get a get a get a, get a, um, get a job mm-hmm. and they get out there. And when they get out there they don't they don't go to school and come into the church. Mm-hmm. But this brother here yeah. stayed right with the church. And came back in the morning and served the Lord. Amen. I know that, 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 that the Lord uh, done a big work in his life. I, I've been seeing him in it. I've seen him in one of them down here. And I, I see the Lord uh, moving into his life. But he had a love for the word of God. And brother, the youth is not at all. It's time for the body of Christ to love the Lord. Amen. Love the Lord Jesus Christ above everything else. And you can be blessed by the Lord and the Lord will you. Now I'm going to say another word there too. Let that top of the just now. And he, and he, and, and he, he never the word God wants to get into battle with. God wants to get into battle with us. We want it. We don't want to get But if we all, oh, if we all, amen. <laughs> And we're all in there, we just, amen, understand God wants to help you. Amen. But a lot of us, amen, we get too proud. Yeah. Yeah. And we think we don't need God. Come on. Come on. And He can't help you. Mm. But I, mm. just, I, just, I just put this little thought, I just wrote it down. God wants to get in the battle with you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I even told you, with me, without me, you can't do nothing. Amen. amen. So brother, so let us, amen, take on that prayer for John. Amen. The Lord will use the mind of him, and then he will humbly keep himself before, before the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. Yeah. and he will go forth and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord of humanity, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Everyone, would you please stand? Amen. Clap your hands. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is always good to be in the house of the Lord. To be among the living. We are not counted among the dead. Amen. Thank you all for joining us this morning. Good morning, Providence family. Good morning. Good morning. morning. You all may be seated. Give me honor to God and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for saving me from my sins. For I have not been a perfect man, but I thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. And I thank you, Lord, for giving me this opportunity to be here today to pursue my commission, my calling to serve you and to preach your word to your people in my hometown. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Good morning again, everyone. I am Brother John Pickens. For those who don't know me, I've been under the mentorship of Pastor Willie R. Singleton here, a great man, uh, a great father a great grandfather, and a great man of God who has been preaching and in the ministry for over 40 years. So thank you, Pastor Singleton. And I want to thank, in her absence today, also a great uh, wife, a great mother, a great grandmother, a great woman of God, First Lady Mother Singleton. Thank you for sitting here for her today, Auntie Elder Sheriff. And I want to thank the pastor and bishop and shepherd of this house. Thank you, Pastor Samuel McNeese. And thank you, First Lady McNeese, for the kindness and generosity that you have shown my family today and that you have shown me. Thank you for inviting me uh, to this, have this opportunity to preach in my hometown, uh, in my home church. I was raised right here in those pews, right, right here in the choir. Uh, my mother and my grandmother made sure that we attended every Sunday school. Uh, anytime there was a Sunday service, we were here. 
uh, every summer for Vacation Bible School, yes, we were in uh, church. So thank you. And uh, I want to thank my mother today, who's in attendance. Thank you, Minister Eliza Collins, for all that you've done, all that you sacrificed for, for me, my sister, my brother, all of my family. Without you, I be, would not be standing here today. Thank you. I also want to thank some of my family members who are no longer here with us in the flesh, but they are with us here in the spirit. I want to take this time to thank my grandmother, Emily Pickens. My grandfather, John L. Pickens. My uh, father, who's a minister and army veteran, James Collins. And my grandmother, May Gray. Thank you, Lord. Many of you, many of you knew them. And I just want to say thank you, Lord, for blessing me to be a part of their life. Because without them also, I would not have been here today. And thank you to all my family members and friends here today. Thank you to my sisters, my brother. My cousins, my aunties, my uncles, all of my nieces and nephews. And thank you to all the Elite Ministries family. Thank you for being here today to support me. And everyone watching online, thank you. Even though you couldn't be here with us under the circumstances, still, we thank you for tuning in today. Amen. Would you all mind take your Bible, or get a hold of your Bibles and turn to the book of John, right. chapter 3. Yeah. We'll be reading right. from verses 16 to 21. That's the book of John, chapter 3. That's a good one. Verses 16 to 21. Now, I myself will be reading from the New King James Version, but you're more than welcome to read from whatever version you have available to you. And when you uh, find it, would you please stand for the reading of the Word of God? Um, I will begin reading, but you can just follow along. Again, that's the book of John, chapter 3, verses 16 to 21. Now we begin at verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten yes, Son Lord. of God. Yes, Lord. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world yes. and that men love darkness yes. rather than the light, yes. because their deeds were evil. Yes. For everyone practicing evil hates the light yes. and does not come to the light, yes. lest his deeds should be exposed. Yes. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Amen. Thank you. That's John chapter 3 verses 16 through 21. Yes. And while we are all standing, please let us all pray. Yes. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless your holy name today, Lord. We glorify and we magnify your holy name this morning. We thank you, Jesus, for waking us up when you did not have to. We thank you, Lord, for every breath of life that you are bestowing upon us this day. We thank you for every footstep that you allow us to take. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to assemble and to fellowship in your house. And we just want to pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit fall upon this place this day on each, on every single man, woman, and child in this building. We thank you. Bless the Lord. We want to cover Pastor and Mother Singleton, Lord Jesus. We want to cover Pastor McNeese and First Lady McNeese. And we want to pray covering over all the lead ministries in the name of Jesus Christ. And let your word flow forth through my mouth to be your word. Not my word, but your word, Lord Jesus. And we thank you on this blessed holy day. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And thank you again for coming out. And ladies and gentlemen, I just request from you just a, full, a few moments of your time, not long, just to discuss a very important question very fundamental question, a very necessary question concerning, it concerns the most important relationship you and I will ever have. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Now this relationship with Jesus is ever so important for three reasons. Number one, God is love. All right. Number two, Jesus does not condemn you. 
And number three, in order to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, he will show you who you are. Now, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came to earth born of the Virgin Mary. He lived and died for our sins. He died on the cross, and in three days he rose to ascend to heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father. To one day soon return for his people. For his church. Not man's church, his church. My brothers and sisters, you feel the perilous times as I do. Every time you turn on your TV, every time you look at your social media account, every, have, every time you have a conversation with your family members and friends, you, you feel the angst in the streets. You see the killing and the violence that's on the rise. You see in our communities, violence is rising. You see case after case of police brutality, of unarmed killings that are going unfixed. You see the, our, our global climate, our weather, year after year, increased hurricanes. Yes. Increased wildfires. Yeah. You see our waters, our air is being more and more contaminated. Our food supply is diminishing as we speak. Yeah. Now, what do all of this mean? We have leaders confusing uh, what's real with what's fake and what's fake with what is real. Yeah. Half, half the time, we don't even know what's up and what's down anymore. Yeah, right. If somebody wants to tell you the sky is uh, blue and the grass is green, you better verify it for yourself these days. Ah, yes. My brother and sister. Our Lord and Savior has not left us without a refuge. Yes. yes. Even though this earth is passing away, yes. it will not last, and it was not meant to last. Amen. But our Lord has not left us without an exit ticket. Amen. He has given us an opportunity at a new life. Yes. We, we do not have to share the faith of this world, yes. but in order to have this everlasting life, this eternal life, we must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, if we go back to our scriptures, the background takes place between a man named Nicodemus and Jesus himself. Yeah. Now, the Pharisees, as you know, were a group of people. They were a group of men, uh, highly educated, scholarly. Uh, they were the self-appointed judge, jury, and executioners of the law. Yeah. It was them. They taxed themselves with keeping the Torah, the Mosaic Code, all the Hebrew traditions. Yeah. It was them that if they found anyone not in compliance with the code, they would condemn them. Now, they would not hold themselves into account, but they would gladly hold other people. Now, during this time, there had been talk going around town of a man named Jesus, a man sent from God. He had been going around town uh, from city to city, place to place, healing the sick, performing miracles, signs, and wonders. Now, of course, when the Pharisees heard about this man, they were very perplexed. They became angry, jealous, hateful. So they would seek him out, wherever he was, to question them try to trick them, to try to expose them, to try to see if they could uh, expose whatever this kind name that he was doing. But time and time again, my brothers and sisters, Jesus would turn their questions back on them and expose their hypocrisy. This one, this one particular occasion in the book of Matthew chapter 9, Jesus was preaching in the temple. And a group of men approached him, carrying another man, a crippled man. But Jesus looked down at the man and told him, your sins are forgiven. And in an attempt to heal the man, the Pharisees shouted out, saying, blasphemy. Blasphemy, you can't forgive sins. Only God can forgive sins. Now let's think about this for a moment. In the Pharisees' eyes, man cannot forgive for their sins, but we can surely condemn for their sins. In fact, the Pharisees routinely did this, going from town to town, telling who's holy and who's not. They often walked the walk, but they did not talk the talk. It would be good to say of that Pharisee spirit, died and left years ago. But unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, is still here today. And not only is it here today, it's alive and well and it's very prevalent. It's in our churches. It's in our schools. It's in our government. It's in our politics. It's among our culture. Do as I say, but not as I do. Now, Nicodemus was a high-ranking member of the Pharisees. He had to begin, he began to separate himself in thought. He wanted to find out who Jesus was for himself. This whole kingdom of the good news thing was starting to interest him, so he wanted to know. So one particular night, he sought him out, as our scripture says, to find out what he has to do. What well, Jesus looked at him and told him, Nicodemus, in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, you must be born again. To be born again, my brothers and sisters, means to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, if we look very closely at what a relationship means, the English Webster's Dictionary defines a relationship as a wish uh, two or more people, groups or countries, behave towards one another 
or in which two or more people, the way they are connected to one another. Now, the Bible defines our relationship with God as a spiritual relationship, not a physical. Uh, in Jesus chapter, in uh, John chapter three, verse seven, Jesus says, "That which is born of the flesh is of the flesh; that which is born of the spirit is of the spirit." And in order to have a relationship with God, who is spirit, we must be born again of the spirit. When all of this happens, you will begin to develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, first and foremost, God is love. Regardless of what you have been told, God is love. It tells us right here in verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, when you say this phrase, God is love, you would think it would evoke emotions of hope and, and love and optimism. But unfortunately, it doesn't. And it doesn't because oftentimes when you say God is love, it evokes an visceral reaction. All right. Well, if God is love, why is there killing in the world? Yeah. If God is love, why is there greed and narcissism, selfishness, yeah. hatred, racism? Yeah. If God is love, why do these things yeah. exist? Yeah. Yeah. We've thought about it, all of us have. Mm -hmm. I have. Yeah. But yeah. perspective is a very powerful thing. Yeah. And when you pray for something, be ready for the Lord to give it to you. The Bible, tells, the Bible tells us right here. It answers that very question. It says right there in verse 16, God is love. It does, it does not say man is love. In fact, nowhere in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation does the Bible ever describe man as full of love and peace and tranquility. Come on. We have described the attributes of God to us. If we want to be honest with ourselves, let's take a couple moments, a couple seconds, and describe our real personality. Scott, come on here. Our real one. Let's, let's just be honest. The personality of mankind is one of, not of love, but of violence, rivalry, competition, greed, narcissism, hatred, racism. That's, that's who we are. Now, we take the fruits of all those personalities that we have, wow. and we produce the fruit that you see in the world today, and we have the galls to look to heaven and say, Lord, I thought you was good. I thought you was love. Oh, come on here. Come on here. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, we have the nerves to look at our parents, our brothers and sisters. You wasn't there for me. You didn't do this for me. But you see, my brothers and sisters, God gave us free will. He gave us free will. Just as he gave Adam and Eve in the garden, he, he, he gives us a choice. You can love or you can hate. You can reach out and help somebody or you can destroy him. You can, you can accept a man by the color of his skin or you can hate him for the color of his skin. You can think of yourself as superior or you can think of yourself as equal. It's up to you. Well, let's take a couple seconds to consider the alternative. What if God wasn't love? He, he gives us a choice. Well, let's think about the other way. What if God wasn't love? Would you be here today? If God wasn't love, would I be here today? Would, would this earth be here today? All right. Would you have been healed from that terminal illness? Would he have freed you from prison? Would he have cleared your criminal record if God wasn't love? Would you still, why aren't you not still sleeping outside under a tree? If God wasn't love, why would he send his only begotten son to die for all of mankind? But you see, my brothers and sisters, don't fall for the deception of the enemy. Don't fall for your own feelings. God is love. Number two, Jesus does not condemn you. Jesus does not condemn you. It says right here in verse 18, he who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The Bible is telling us right here, Jesus does not condemn you. No matter what you've done, no matter how many felonies, misdemeanors, no matter how many people you think you've killed, abused, no matter what you think you've done, or what other people accuse you of, Jesus does not condemn you. Jesus can't be saved, not condemned. Now you might be, you might be thinking to, your, uh, to yourself, brother John. I don't really know about this church thing. I, I don't really know about this Jesus thing. I've heard about it, but I don't really know if it's for me because I'm not a perfect person. 
I've messed up. Come on, come on. I've done things that I don't want to even know about no more. I've done things that you don't want to know about. So if I can God use somebody, how can I believe it if I'm not a perfect man? Well, my brother and sister, you just the person that Jesus came for. We, we are the imperfect people that he came to save. From the book of Genesis to the book of Revelations, God has used imperfect people to accomplish his will. He used Abraham, who he called the father of many nations. Abraham, as we know, was a known liar. Come on, man. He used Moses. Moses, he chose to lead his people from Egypt, from the grips of Pharaoh. But Moses, as we know, was a murderer. He used Rahab. Yes, Lord. That's right. Jesus loves both genders. Rahab uh, had a very promiscuous lifestyle. But yet he still had a purpose for her to help the Hebrew people take the promised land. Come on. The Lord used King David. Yes, King David was a man of adultery, a man who committed murder, but the Lord used him to establish his kingdom in Jerusalem. The Lord used Jonah. Jonah was a man of fear, anxiety, depression, but yet the Lord still used him to fill his home. And that as we know, the Lord used Paul. Paul killed and was responsible for the, the lives of countless Christians. But the Lord still used Paul to write over two-thirds of the New Testament. So from Genesis to Revelation, we all fall in there somewhere. All of us. I can't, including me, I can't sit here. I'm not a perfect person. But we are just the people that the Lord came to save. He has a purpose for all of us. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, in order to have a relationship, uh, lastly, he will show us who we are. You cannot hide anything from the light. The Bible in verse 20 says, For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Jesus is telling us right here, ignorance is much better to live in than the truth. It's much easier for us to live in darkness than it is the light. Or as I, we just described earlier, our personality is one of the darkness. Yeah. But you see, Jesus is the light of the world. Yeah. And when you walk with him, when you desire to have a relationship with him, he will expose things on the inside of you that you never even knew was there. Yeah. The Bible says you will not be a perfect person the moment you walk down that aisle and become baptized. Yeah. This is a lifelong process. It's not something that you should feel intimidated that you're not going to wake up the next day and be a perfect person. That's right. This is a, a lifelong process, an everlasting process. Yes. But one yet so every more, uh, every more important. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Brother John, uh, I didn't do anything wrong. I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't kill anybody. I pay my taxes. I feed my family. I go to work. I mind my own business. I don't do anything. I don't, I don't understand all this Bible, this Jesus stuff. Well, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says very clearly, all have sinned and shall in for the glory of God. That means no matter how many times you paid your taxes, no matter how many times you said good morning and good night to somebody, the Bible says all have sinned and shall in for the glory of God. Now, you still might be saying, but I still don't get it. I, I don't really know if I really need to go this route in my life. I see so much happening. Well, my brothers and sisters, the Bible says everything that we think, everything that we desire will be brought into account. Amen. So that means when we reap what we sow, we may not even be reaping for something that you physically did, uh -huh. but our very thoughts, our very desires. Yeah. So unless you are one of the perfect people that have never thought anything bad or did anything bad, all of us, we all need a relationship with Jesus Christ. Right? And in closing, we must be born again. To be born again means you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, one of the biggest barriers to having this relationship is uh, something that I used to do routinely. We confuse the actions of God and man. Well, I see so much happening in the church with the evangelicals and the, the pastors and the bishops and the, the deacons arguing amongst one another, the, the finance room still in the money, people arguing over in the choir who can sing the best. That sort of stuff can turn you off. 
But again, when you pray for perspective, when you pray to the Lord for something and he gives it to you, beware. So consider this. If your goal is to be an NFL player, a basketball player, a hockey player, will you let the fact that many people in those professions commit crimes, abuse their careers, will, will, that let, will you let that stop you from your goal to become a professional athlete? Oh, come on, come on. He told me something else. He said, well, what if your goal is to be a doctor or a lawyer, mm -hmm. an artist, a singer, a musician, mm -hmm. um, an entertainer of any form? Uh, just because you have people in those professions abusing their careers, abusing their relationships, should that stop you from uh, aspiring to those career fields? No, it shouldn't. Yeah. And lastly, he showed me something else. If your goal is to be married, yeah. to have a family, yeah. to be a good mother, yeah. a good husband, should the fact that you see other marriages out there being destroyed and tarnished by other people, by the mothers and the fathers, should that stop you from aspiring to be a mother or a father and have a family? No, you shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. Come on. Well, likewise, my brothers and sisters, All right. just because we see the hypocrisy in the church today, just because we see the condemnation in the church today, just because we see violence and racism in the church today, do not ascribe the actions of God as a man. Just because other people have tarnished and destroyed their relationship with Jesus, that does not mean you have to destroy your relationship. With Jesus. Jesus loves you. He loves you regardless of where you've been, your background, no matter how many criminal offenses you have done, no, no matter what you've done, Jesus loves you. No matter the color of your skin, no matter your ethnic background, your culture, no matter what your previous religious denomination is, Jesus loves you. And Jesus loves you because he is real. Yes. Jesus is on his way back. Yes. And time is not long. So I encourage you all today, to everyone listening, to everyone online today, we must all have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah. We all must be born again. Do not be deceived by the lies of the enemy. This opportunity is for all of us. It's not for just these people over here, for those people over here. It's for all of us. My brothers and sisters, thank you all today. And no matter what we come up against out here, no matter what these coming days and weeks have, we know that we have a friend in Jesus. He loves you, and he is going to soon to return for you. Thank you. Thank you all this morning. And while we are standing, please let us, let us bow our heads in the moment of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, bless the Lord, for this opportunity that you have given us this day to come out here to assemble to hear your word, Lord. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that no matter what these coming events and these coming weeks and months have, we pray, Lord, that we are all shielded by your blood. We plead your blood over every single man, woman, and child in this building. And bless the Lord, we thank you. We thank you for protection against COVID-19. We thank you for protecting us against all hurt, harm, and danger, both the seen and the unseen. And we want to pray covering over Pastor and Mother Singleton. We want to pray healing over their bodies. We want to pray healing over their households. And we want to pray covering and healing for Pastor McNeese and First Lady McNeese. We want to pray healing over their entire households and healing over all of Provident League Ministries family. We want to pray for everyone, Lord, that desires a relationship with you. We pray for those, Lord, who don't want a relationship with you. And we pray for all of us who already do have a relationship with you. We pray that you keep us, Lord, under the shadow of your mighty wings. And we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful, blessed day that you have blessed us with to be here to fellowship in your name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you.
rest of the morning. Yes, you will do your message, Lord. Yes, and your truth. Your word. Yes, and yes, we ask you, God, to let that word be saturated in the heart. Yes, God. Yes, let that word, oh God, be moved yes. in the spirit. That he'll go forth yes, yes. with the anointing that you gave him. Yes, yes. You you're anointing him already. He's already anointed. Yes. I just pray, I just pray God to be able to lay my hands on him. Yes, and thank God, amen, to be with the God bless you, God keep you, and God will not use you yes. for no more. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. As we honor the Lord, come on, bring up. Amen. Matter of fact, I tell you what we do. Let's go stand by the ashes. Amen. This is, this is the church you came up in. In honor and respect to Pastor Emeritus, I would say this remind me so much of my father. They have the blessings, they have the blessings of the Father. They have the blessings of the Father. It's an honor. I think it's a great honor to see why he is alive. Come on, somebody. Amen. Knowing and all of those things to see why he is alive. And be grateful. And as Bishop, as a part of the Episcopacy, I just want to do something. Because I talked to him in the midst of talking to him on the phone, his humility, that's so his humility, um, based on his humility, um, and so level of maturity, I said I want to do something and so I'm grateful. I'm going to ask my assistant, Norma, would you come? Come and grab a hold. I thought of this and robbery. He's still going to be a part of our MIT. I said, man. I want you to be a part of our ministers in training because many times we many people can carry on the anointing, but you need some training with that anointing. Come on, somebody, amen. amen. And and the love of the word that this man preached to us, he blessed us today. And I was very happy for the word of God. Amen. And so what I want to do as a pastor, I wanted to give him uh, he understands on and on of those things. We already talked about it. I wanted to give him something that on this day that he preached his first sermon. Amen. Right. I want to give him some license, a certificate of license to say that he has preached his first sermon on today. Amen. First sermon today and to receive something from his church that he can place upon his wall, that he can place in his house, that he can take back to Tampa, Tampa, Florida. And let all of them know that he, listen, he is not a renegade. Hello, somebody. That's right. You know, really, he, he's been sanctioned. Real. He's real. He had hands laid on. And after he goes through our MIT, uh, we will go through that training. And listen, he's such a good preacher, good teacher. Uh, and they go through that training. Uh, they tell you, our training is very tough. I want you to be great. I want you to be great. Uh, but he's going to be good. Amen. Yeah. Come on, good start. Amen. After him going through that training, we were ordained him as an elder. Amen. Out of this church, it's my honor. Listen, right to us. This certificate of license, this is a certified to John Douglas M. Pickens, is one who has given evidence of a calling by God into the gospel ministry is licensed to preach the gospel as an opportunity may be presented and to exercise God-given gifts in ministry. On this day, September 27, 2020, Providential Elite International Ministries, Bishop Samuel L. McNeese, Pastor, Pastor Willie R. Pastor Emeritus, Shonda Williams, Administrator, Clerk. We're grateful. And listen, this is something you can take with you, and we want to present that to you. You hold it. They take it. They look at it. Go on to the next pass. Y'all take these beautiful pictures now. Amen. 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 Somebody say amen. Amen. Let's thank God for you. Thank God for you. Thank God for Brother John. Amen. Amen. All the time. Thank you, Brother. Thank you, Brother. Thank you. Um, 
as we are getting ready, we are moving forward. We're grateful. Thank you, Providential League International. Amen. Thank you, family. Thank you. Blessing to you that are watching my Facebook Live and watching. I know that you've been blessed by the Word of God. Thankful for the Word of God. This is a good day.
believe the 30 more seconds. If you believe God and need God to do something, notice what I just said. If you believe God and need God to do something, I'm going to say it again. Whatever you believe in Him for, I need you to pray that like it's already done. Because your belief is going to turn into manifestation. When he said something, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, so he might be was that. When he said that God is a love, God has a way of turning things around. If he did it for Abraham, if he did it for Jonah, Moses, God can to use you in this time. So I need you to point at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what you going through? There's evidence that God has an anointing on your life.
shall not see under the eye of the Lord. Thank you for the word. I believe after the word, there will be some manifestation. That's right. Yes, Lord. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Everybody just clap your hands.
your neighbor real good and say, neighbor. neighbor. Make sure your pen is ready. Because sure that's some stuff I'm going to sign off this year.
You can't give me a hope. I sure ain't gonna allow you to keep me in my past. Yeah. Yeah. Look at something like real good. Like I need hope in this season. I need hope. Look like the look like the old folks say, Can I hope you? I need to hope you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 Amen.
the Lord is saying, take on in the rapture, whatever. I say this wholeheartedly. I want you to take this. This man believed God so much. Yeah, he loved God so much. He said, you know, today, he said, he said, I don't ever doubt in fear of the Lord taking me because I know where I'm going. Yeah. You don't have to fear death when you know where you're going. Yes, I call it. If you fear and die, it's because I'm not sure where you're going. You don't know where you're going. And bless me. Because many times, if you have the same attitude as you do at a home, at a home calling, at a homecoming, you're going to need that same attitude at a home going. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So I want you to do that. So i the instructions. So you've been watching, you've been listening. October the 11th. Let me say it loud so we can get clarity. October, somebody's birthday October the 11th? Oh, that's your birthday. We have a birthday today. You know what? You guys are here. Don't be spirit. October the 11th. We will open up our services to limited seating. Okay? Our doors will be open only for limited seating. I want to thank God for our staff at our church. Mr. Dominique's first, uh, first lady. First lady Beast. Uh, all of our musicians, our singers, everyone, our preachers, we're making sure the coming in the door, the um, temperature check, the waivers, all of those things, and the mask that you may feel secure in coming to church. Amen. I don't want you to come to church and be timid. When we come over here, I don't want you to like to be baptized in lemon juice and broom juice. I want you to be able to lift your hands freely Amen. and rejoice. And so this is the reason why we've opened up the chairs so you can be in a place of environment where it is safe. Yes. We have our human, uh, when they are sanitizing everything we do, mm -hmm. make sure the atmosphere is good. Yes. And so October the 11th, what we're asking you to do, make sure I got that number right. What we're asking you to do is sign up, RSVP, call the church line. I believe it's 561-877-8804. If you do that, thank you. Thank you. If you do that, they place it on the they have it on the Facebook line, they have it on our page. But I want you to do that. If you don't have, listen, know somebody and want to invite somebody, what you have to do is sign up, call that answer machine. Leave it and say, I want to be a part of October the 11th. Listen, and after our numbers have went to around 35, somewhere along, after we are filled up, then we will place you up on that following Sunday. So you will not be left behind. Amen. It just when to reach our capacity, uh, our capacity of being full, then we will place you up on that following Sunday that we'll be able to attend to all of our membership. We have a great membership, but I want to make sure, because I miss all of you all, and I want to make sure that we'll be a part. So October the 11th. So you must call. You can call now. Leave it on the answer machine. People are signing up. That we'll be able to do that. October the 11th. That we'll be able to bless God. Now first Sunday morning. Next Sunday morning. Which means we won't be here next Sunday morning. I need you here at 5 o'clock Sunday evening. Amen. Everybody got the instructions. So that's the first Sunday morning we won't be here. We'll be here on Sunday evening. That we may give a great honor the pastor of marriages and honor him that Sunday evening at 5. Somebody shout amen. amen. Oh my, it's clear the Bible said that all things get an understanding. Am I missing anything, y'all? Yes, sir. Missing anything? All right. Bless you. Thank you. And make sure. Thank you, staff. Uh, so waivers are signed. Those things are done. And we make sure that they happen. Move forward. Amen. Let's thank God again for Mr. John Pickens. Let's stand, everyone. Let's stand. Let's stand. This is how we greet everybody. Bless you, Melvin, and all of those Hallelujah. things. We greet. Show our respect. Make sure everything is taken care of Jesus' name. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the man of God. Thank you for the word of God. Continue to bless his life. His future is in your hand. His future is bright. And we thank you that it's done in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody shout amen. Amen.